Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Welcome to St. Isidore's. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. To begin, let's recognize God's presence in each other by welcoming those around us. With full heart and full voice, please join us in singing number 62, Come Emmanuel, number 62. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist today, we pause and we ask Jesus to forgive us our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to turn our hearts and hands from deeds of violence to works of peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to help us lay aside the works of darkness and to live honorably as in the light. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come to gather into your kingdom those who are vigilant and ready for your return. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end, her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. salvation to those who fear him glory dwelling in our land lord let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss, truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness. And grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation.
A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to rep repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before he at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's the second week of Advent. It's a time of preparation, but a joyous, festive time of preparation. When we focus not only on celebrating the birth of Jesus on the first Christmas, but we also focus on Jesus' coming again, when he comes again at the end of time. Advent stresses hope and joy. This is a time to put it all on the line this is a time when people are anticipating, when their hearts are open, maybe even softened a bit. Perhaps now more than any other time of the year, because there's magic in the air. And it's a time when people want to feel the love of Jesus. So the time is now 
to share that joy, that magic with others. And of course, we know that magic is Jesus Christ. He's in us, waiting to be shared. Think of a time when you shared something with someone. Go way back if you have to. Maybe it was a toy or some candy. Maybe you were playing a game and you asked someone to participate with you. Maybe you just shared in a conversation. How did that make you feel? Happy? Did it make you feel good? Knowing that you were the cause of someone else's joy? I remember a time in the waiting room at the doctor's office. I was there with my mom, but she had to leave for some reason probably to chase after my hooligan younger brothers, I suppose. I'm not sure. So it was just me there along with another lady that I didn't know. And she started asking me questions. And I answered them. And somehow my answers were more than just one or two words. And then mom came back and the lady said, that's a fine son you have there. And mom said, oh? Was he talking? I imagine she was a bit surprised because, of course, I was in my teenage uh, grunt stage at that time. You know, er, mm, uh. We kind of all know what that's like. But what I know from that conversation is that all I felt was goodness, just goodness. Something took place there beyond my control. I couldn't explain it, and there was a goodness in that encounter that seemed to be way out of proportion to the encounter itself. In the gospel today, we hear, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. In other words, the Lord is coming, clear the way. Our mighty king is on his way, make it easy for him to enter. Don't delay, he's near. Now, when the president wants to go visit a city, there are people that go ahead of him to make sure that everything is in order. They give up of some of their time and they go to get things set up so that the president can be heard and received in the best way possible. Well, maybe that's what we can do by sharing with others, a meal, a visit, a phone call, an invitation. By sharing and doing something nice for someone else, maybe we are helping clear a path that leads Jesus to them, that allows Jesus into their hearts. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. In the gospel today, we also heard John the, ba <clears throat> John the Baptist saying, one mightier than I is coming after me. In other words, someone important is coming, mightier than John the Baptist. And the one who is coming is a big deal. I ever notice in a, in a basketball game, a good team might have a little guy and a big guy. And the little guy's job is to throw the ball up into the air so the big guy can slam dunk it. The crowd loves slam dunks. The little guy knows that and he knows his role. And he, he doesn't get all the headlines for scoring a lot of points, but he's okay with that. He sacrifices so that the other guy looks good and together they're successful. John the Baptist certainly knew where he fit in. He said he was unfit to perform even the lowliest of duties, which was untying the sandal strap of Jesus' sandals. He knew his role. Jesus is big, John the Baptist was not. But he didn't seem to mind making sacrifices for him. He wore clothing of camel's hair. I'm not sure what that is, but it doesn't sound comfortable. He ate locusts and wild honey. But maybe all this was just to remind himself of how important it was for people to be ready to receive Jesus and receive the baptism that he was gonna perform using the Holy Spirit. 
Is that our role too, to play a key part in bringing others to Christ? To help make Jesus successful? To do our part, but to take a back seat to the one who can do all things. One mightier than I is coming after me. Advent is meant to be a joyous, festive time, but it can also be overwhelming. We can have difficult things going on in our lives. The joy of sharing the love of Jesus is available whether you're on the giving or receiving end. The Holy Spirit is in us, waiting to be shared. In a visit, a phone call, an invitation. And it's amazing sometimes that even the simplest of things, the most minuscule, minuscule of, of sharing gestures, can bring so much happiness in the other person. It can bring more joy to our hearts than if we would have pursued our own wants and desires. This is what the Christ child wants to bring us. He came into the world to share himself with us, the ultimate goodness in the form of a little baby. This is the joy of the Advent season. And when you wake up on Christmas morning to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus, that joy just fills your heart as you remember the joy you saw in others by some small act of sharing. It's in sharing and giving of ourselves that brings joy. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, help us always to listen to your Son, Jesus, and prompted by the Holy Spirit to follow him, for he alone can lead us to you. Grant us this, Lord, in the favors we ask in Jesus' name. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop George Lucas, and for all parishioners throughout the Archdiocese of Omaha, that we may grow in our love of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the innocent victims of the war in Gaza and in Israel, for those who have lost loved ones, for those who were wounded, for those whose homes have been destroyed and have no place to go, for those who have neither food, water, or medical supplies, and for those who have no hope for the future, that people throughout the world will come to their aid. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially for Judy Abeglin, Nikki Brigham, Caitlin Ferris, Glenda Liebig, John Lippert, Bridget McPhillips, Mildred Mitch, Christopher Pedraza, Jerry Ronker, and Karen Shemek, that they may experience the healing presence of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Mark Brockhaus, Patrick Gasper, Teresa Gambica, Bill Haney, Alma Schumacher, 
Marie Krings, and Raymond Stock, that they may share in Christ's risen glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents who have lost a child, that they may find peace and comfort in their faith in Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who were buried from St. Isidore Church this past year, and for all of our loved ones who have died this past year, that they may know the joys of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving to Almighty God for his incredible love and many blessings, let us give thanks and praise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pray for all parishioners for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our unspoken needs and intentions, let us now pause and pray to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our Father in heaven, please grant us these and all our needs, for which we pray to you today in Jesus' name, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. As the gifts and table are being prepared, please join in singing number 48, Beyond the Moon and Stars, number 48.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayer and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed to this first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created right is your praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, if your sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by his death, he will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Joseph, St. Isidore, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the entire people your son has gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to other passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory to Christ our Lord, through whom he bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me in making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come only spiritually into my heart. I embrace you if you are already there, deny myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Oh, uh-huh. 
Will those who take communion to the sick please come forward? <coughs> we, the many form one body, go now to the members of our parish family who cannot be with us today. Go in our name and with our blessing, and may the Lord Jesus be with you as you go on your way. Thank you for going. Oh, let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join together in praying the prayer for the successful completion of our parish center. Loving Father, we come to you in adoration. May our hearts be open to your guidance on this journey. You have bestowed in your church community the gifts to openly worship and praise your name. We humbly give thanks for the opportunity to serve you with our gifts and talents. Jesus, pour out your Holy Spirit as we gather in prayer to build a faithful prayer center for all generations. Most sacred heart of Jesus, pray for us. Blessed Virgin Mary, pray for us. Saint Isidore, pray for us. Please be seated. We extend our deepest sympathy to Joanne Velashin of Columbus, Julie and Tim Sliva of Tarnov, and, the siblings, uh, and their siblings whose mother, Marie Kerings, uh, died on November 30th. She was buried yesterday in St. Michael's Church in Tarnov. And we extend our deepest sympathy to Marie's uh, daughter-in-law, Cheryl Kerings of our parish, and also uh, the sister uh, of uh, Norma Duran. We also extend our deepest sympathy to the relatives and friends of Alma Schumacher, who died on November 14th at Fountain Hills, Arizona. She'll be buried in St. Patrick's St. Joseph's Church uh, this coming Friday in, in, in Platt, near Platt Center. We extend our deepest sympathy to Marilyn Haney and, Haney and her family, whose husband and father Bill Haney died last Wednesday and he was buried yesterday at St. Anthony's Church in Columbus. We extend our deepest sympathy to Patrick Gasper, his daughters Jasmine, Clarissa, and Clarissa, and to their families, and to his brothers and sisters, Richard and Kath, Catherine, Greg and Cindy, Kurt, Bruce and Audra, Angela, Robert and Tracy. Patrick died uh, last uh, Wednesday, uh, December 6th, at the uh, Emerald Nursing Home here in town, and he'll be buried Monday at 11 a.m. in the Columbus Cemetery. And finally, we extend our deepest sympathy to, uh, uh, for the, to the family of uh, Teresa Jempica. Her funeral will be here on Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Vigil in church uh, Wednesday afternoon at 5 p.m. Visitation for 3 to 5. Eternal rest granted to them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Amen. We have a holy hour this afternoon for peace. God knows the world needs peace. Something like 170,000 people have been killed in that Russian-Ukraine contract and about 20,000 in the uh, Israeli uh, uh, Gaza area. And so many thousands of people, actually millions, uh, have no homes, uh, no place to go, and so we certainly need to pray for peace in the world. Compassionate friends, we'll be meeting tonight at 7 o'clock here in church until 830. For parents who have lost a loved one, uh, it's a very solemn and a very, a very beautiful service. I encourage you to attend. 
Uh, the Knights of Columbus had one of that incredible breakfasts this morning, French toast and, and uh, pancakes, uh, sausage and eggs, uh, fruit, uh, just the most wonderful breakfast in town today. And the Knights would like to see you over in their cafeteria as soon as this Mass is over. The Knights will also have a wine and cheese party next Sunday afternoon, December 17th, to watch the uh, championship uh, the volleyball tournament on big screen. The doors will open at 2.30. You'll find uh, my Christmas letter today and a confession schedule on the back. Uh, we have a lot of hours of confession schedule. Last year, they were all filled. I hope they'll all be going to get filled. I hope you'll prepare for the coming of Christ by receiving the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. It's great having the choir with us this morning. Thank you for being here. Let's go forth singing number 43, People Look East, number 43. Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. 